What's up, y'all? Welcome back to 52 Books. Last week was really challenging and amazing. If you haven't watched last week's video, click right here. It is on What Shall We Say, an amazing book by Thomas Long. You should really check it out. This week, we are going to read Congo Soul by Emmanuel Ntibuera and it is about how a once barefoot refugee delivered hope, faith, and 2,000 pairs of shoes. And what's crazy is I actually went to school with him. We had a um, biology class together. Uh, we were in the same lab. And so I know him personally. I know him personally. He commented and was like, yo, you should review this. And so that's what I'm going to do. We're gonna read it because I know there's some nuggets we can pull out of here to make us better. Because that's what this channel is about. To make us better, have personal growth, um, talk about wealth, and gaining knowledge, y'all. So, without further ado, we're about to read Congo Soul. Y'all already know what it is. Cue background music. Let's get it. Congo Soul is a really good book. Emmanuel, you did your thing with this, man. I really enjoy reading it. Congo Soul is about, it's literally what the title says. How a once barefoot refugee delivered hope, faith, and 2,000 pairs of shoes to the Congo. The story starts off in the past and he talks about the Great African War which claimed over 5 million lives, y'all. Nothing like that has been seen since World War II. This happened in 96, 2000. So all of this is going on and Emmanuel and his family are um, refugees, but the story starts out when he is in Liberty University. Well, the book starts out when he is in Liberty University. During convocation, they would highlight different things that the school is doing, mainly missions trips. And as he is watching this, it gets in his mind that they should go to the Congo because he knows firsthand what has happened there and all of that. So he says that, and then he says one thing that I underlined and I thought it was really good. He says he realized that he can be the miracle that he desperately needed as a kid because he realized everything that the people of the Congo were going through, he went through, and he wants to be the miracle he was looking for as a child. As a child, him and his brother, uh, Baraka, they would sing, they would dance. His father was a pastor, store owner, and he owned uh, the apartment complex, but it was really like communal living. But there wasn't any indoor plumbing so in the rainy season they had this big black tank that would gather the water for them but in the dry season he would have to walk 45 minutes because he was the oldest he would have to walk 45 minutes to get water to fill up the uh, big black tank that stored the water for them it was water for food, for cleaning, and for cooking. A cool story that he tells is about when his mother and father first got married, they met in the choir of all places. You know, he a pastor, you know. They met in the choir. And they have their firstborn child, a son named Ujege. Ujege lives for like 12 months. He dies of malaria. And now his mother is like stricken. She's hurt, she just lost a child. A woman comes and knocks on her door and she tells her God told her to tell her to stop crying that she's gonna have another child and she is to call him Imani, which means faith. So his mother stops crying and the lady continues to tell her and says, there are men and women inside of you you will bear more children. Children is a sign of like prosperity, grace, faith, wealth in that community. And so 
that's like great and encouraging news to her after she just lost a child. It comes true, Emmanuel is born, and that is just amazing. They end up having nine children, four boys and five girls. The day when everything went south, he was playing soccer with his brothers, and he's seven at the time. He's playing soccer with his brothers, and they start to hear gunshots. And they didn't think anything of it until they see people running, and then it's then that everything settled in, that they realize that war is there. So they rush home, and they, they buckle down. Some people leave, some people stay, but it is terror outside. Explosions, gunshots, and he's terrified. This whole time, his mother is seven months pregnant while taking care of a toddler and those four boys. Like, she's a G. They finally end up leaving because the father didn't want to leave yet because he didn't think his wife would be able to make the journey. But she made the journey. She talked to him. She said, yo, don't think I can't make this journey. God will keep us safe. And so... They started on the journey. The women stayed in the hut and the men slept outside in waist high grass. And they eventually made it out, went, trekked through the jungle and ended up at his grandfather's house, which he never met before because the journey was so far. But they made it there and they're safe. And that's where I am now. So far, this is a really, really good read. If you're watching this Tuesday, pick up this book and finish it by Friday because that's when I'm going to put up the second video. This is really, really good. This is a really good book. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And if you have a book that you would like for me to read and review so that I could be better, so that we could be better, please put it in the comments below. Thank you for watching 52 Books. Peace.